everybody, and welcome back to the All Right Podcast. Remember, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an All Right Podcast. Guys, welcome back to another episode, and now we have Toig here as well. Now, Toig, please introduce yourself. Thanks for uh, asking me on, Auntie. I'm Toig. I'm 23. I'm a Dublin-born songwriter. I recently released my debut single, Search for Freedom, and um, I'm very glad to be on here today with you, Anthony. Nice one. I, I, I actually listened to it. I remember going on Facebook and i i saw it and i clicked it was like a preview or a teaser or so and when mm. i clicked on it i was like jesus christ it's actually fucking good like what the fuck and then like because it's the first time i've ever heard of yourself like you know and um, yeah. i was like this, this is fucking catchy and then when the actual song came out um you had it on spotify and so and i mm. i listened to it um and i was like this is a good fucking song this is a good voice like you'd, you'd fucking You'd go. You'd pay money to go see someone with a voice like this, um, and then I saw as well. I also saw that you were doing a gig for. I think it was the people around your estate. Um, you were just outside singing songs, mm-hmm. and uh, there's a lot of uh, artists doing that around. And I think it's a great idea for the likes of entertainment and so. But when we when, before we talk about any of that, I'd like to go back to childhood and like that as well and when you first discovered if even if it was at childhood when you first discovered what um what age did you start getting an interest in music and like you know playing the guitar and singing and so yeah and the, like uh, i've been writing songs Anthony, since i was only a child you know and um, i would have started playing guitar when i was five or six you know um songwriting has just always been a part of my life you know it's something that um I've always had in my life, do you know what I mean? I'm very lucky to have it in my life as well, I think, you know? Um, particularly, like, during the lockdown, like, uh, it's been such a great thing for me to fall back on, you know, something I can uh, focus on every day. Um, but as I said, like, I've been uh, writing songs now. I'm 23 now for probably the best part of 15 years, you know? And um, I do hope they've probably got a little bit better over the 15 years, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, since I was a child, you know? That's that's good. And when when you um when you start forcing write when you start for writing songs like um, can you remember the force of a song you wrote that you performed? Not quite, Anthony. Uh, my uncle actually had a little like home studio, you know, um, and so we have some tracks in there from years ago that I would have laid down, you know, um, like growing up, Anthony, I always would listen to songwriters. Do you know what I mean? Uh, the likes of Damien Dempsey. Mm. Uh, Bob Dylan, these kind of people were uh, people I would have really listened to, you know. Um, so that 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 kind of uh, when I found the guitar and found writing myself, I kind of I learned a lot of these people as to what you can do with just a voice and the guitar, you know. Um, so yeah, like the, the the home studio we had, like it was in my uncle's house, and we would have been uh, recording tracks there, like. Since I was about eleven or twelve, kind of thing, you know. Um, and it's actually quite interesting for me to listen to them because, like, uh, the tracks I was writing then, and the way I was singing then, and like uh, the way I was pronouncing my words, even vocally back then, mm. has changed, you know. So it's it's great to have them on a on a track, you know what I mean? Yeah, you can see that you can see the progress you can see from the eleven yeah. twelve, and that's what yeah. happens with any um, you know, anybody that anyone that starts out even as a rapper or someone's making films mm. or or sorry like that. When you start off, you're going to give your 110%, but when you look back down the road, you're going to go, Jesus Christ, I can do so much better than I could do back then. But at least you know that you gave it your 110% back then, so that's why you're positive with it. That's why you're happy with them choices, you know, um, when you're making a song or doing a film or wh- whatever it comes with. But when you were saying that you would uh, go into the studio, uh, your, your uncle had a small studio. When you went into that studio, what was it like? Uh, when you first walked in, you start performing um, in, in that studio. Were you, were you nervous or did you have some confidence there already? You know, recording was uh, it was kind of strange when I first began. You know, songwriting, Anthony, comes quite naturally to me. You know, uh, it's just something that's like a part of me day. You know, uh, recording, like uh, even recording Search for Freedom, I would have recorded a couple of little tracks before then. Brings a whole, it's a whole different kind of challenge, you know what I mean? Um, in terms of like time and keeping in time with the music, like recording the vocal and the guitar separately, mm. you know, uh, putting any added bits in like backing vocals or maybe a bit of bass we would have been putting down back then. Mm. Uh, so it was a completely new uh, experience for me, you know. Um, 
when I say studio, it was like a mixing desk, you know, like a, a twelve track mixing desk. Yeah. But it was quite good quality, like so. Uh, yeah, like luckily, like obviously, of course, with my uncle, it was a very comfortable setting. You know what I mean? It was a yeah, comfortable yeah. place to lay down kind of tracks. Uh, but recording, like I'm still very new to recording, really. You know, I've only really properly recorded one song. Do you know what I mean? So I have a lot to learn in recording. You know, like playing to a click track. Yeah. Uh, I hated that. <laughs> I did not enjoy that at all. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Cause, but uh, yeah, so it, it is. It's I love. I like. I love recording. I love writing a song and then hearing it back. You know, like uh, "Course Search for Freedom" being my debut single. To hear that back off, you know, Spotify or Amazon is a massive thrill. You know, um, so recording is very enjoyable. But it is totally different to songwriting. Do you know what I mean? Because songwriting is purely creative. You know. Uh, Whereas there is probably there is technical elements to start to recording, you know, um, that that need a lot of practice, really. Yeah, because like I was gonna ask as well is that it's everybody as a kid they always want they were like, come here, I'm gonna give a singing a go, and you go up to your friends, can I sing? Or you'd you'd fucking sing in the shower, I still sing in the shower, like and you know, or people are like I'm a rapper, do you want to hear me raps and so and when you when you um sang in front of people for the first time and so what was the response what was what was it what, what was that what were they like right this is this is good but you could work on it or they're like holy shit i think you got something here like i've had some bad gigs anthony yeah <laughs> come here I'm I'm a, i do stand up and i fucking before the quarantine yeah. lock, lock <laughs> uh, lockdown my the last fucking stand-up gig i done like two months ago um I bombed. Even one of the comedians were like, "This is so bad." But I done the same set to people in yeah. Navin and all out, like Johnny in different places, and a yeah. fucking killed. Yeah. So just, it's all right. It's all right. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, when I was beginning, like you know, like uh, I would, as I said, I would have been, I would have listened to a lot of Bob Dylan. I would have listened to uh, you no know, Jake Bug people like that as well. You know, I, I know uh, Bob Dylan, so I, I, I don't know the Jake fella. Yeah, like, so when I first started playing, to be honest with you, I, I was probably uh, mimicking these people a bit, you know, I mean, performance, you know, um, and it just takes time to find your own place, you know, uh, as well, like, obviously, when I first started playing, you know, uh, live, although I would have always enjoyed it, yeah, I, I did have some uh, <laughs> some rough nights in open mics and things like that, yeah. but that's kind of part of the course, you know, you just take it and soldier on, you know, and that's how I suppose you get better, you know, Um Playing live, like naturally, I would, I just love playing live. You know, I, mm. I really, I really love it. You know, um, it's very enjoyable. Like, and of course, like at the very beginning, I wouldn't have had as many songs as I do now. You know, um, yeah. but songwriting would have probably been less developed. So, I uh, probably would have been playing a few more covers, etc. Mm. So now, like when I go out and play, you know, if if I have a strong set practiced, it's uh, there's no real feeling like it for me. You know, like. Um, I really, I really enjoy it, you know. That's good. And when you, when you were talking about the live and you said you like doing it live and so that, what is it about doing a live that you love so much? You know, like, a songwriting is quite, like, a solitary thing, you know. Like, I write songs on my own. I'm not in a band, you know. Yeah. Uh, I've always written on my own. Um, so music is kind of to be shared, right, you know. So, like, uh, of course, when you release a track and it's on Spotify, people are listening to it, but you're not listening to it with them. Do you know, they might be sending you feedback, etc., but they're, they're not listening to it with you. Yeah. So I suppose when I play live, like it's the real time where I get to like uh, share your music with people. Do you know what I mean? Like uh, physically with people. Do you know? Like, mm-hmm. um, and it's just yeah, it's just been a very fulfilling thing for me to do. I suppose like I've always looked at it, like, especially when I have a gig coming up. You know, I I'd, 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 I'd practice very hard. You know, like playing live for me. It's a bit like when a boxer goes to do a boxing match or a footballer goes to play a football match, you know, that kind of thing. Like, that's the way I look at it, you know. Uh, and then, of course, when it goes well and there's a good reaction, you know, um, yeah, of course. It's, it's the best it's feeling. Fun. It's the best feeling. That's the response you want and that's the response you get. Mm-hmm. It's the same way yeah. if you did a stand-up and so that if you go up on stage and you're doing a live in front of people and the response that you get that you want, it's just a, it's a certain feeling, certain rush that... A lot of people do, but not a lot of people get. And I'd say that you know that feeling uh, when you hear cheering, when you hear screaming, they're like, play the next song or play it. Oh, we can't wait for it. And then you, I'd say it's such a rush. Is it? Is it yeah. it's such a rush for it? A big time, especially when it's your own songs, you know? Like, yeah. uh, I don't really play covers anymore at all. Uh, yeah. 
So when your own songs, of course, it's uh, it's just a great boost for you. It's a bit, it's a boost. You know what I mean? It's a boost. Yeah. It gives you more confidence. Go back and write. And I think, yeah. I think that is good that you're kind of going away from the covers because it doesn't matter who you are. Bloody Elvis Presley done so much fucking covers. Michael Jackson done covers. Like you know, it it doesn't matter who you are. Um. They're, they're gonna do covers and they're gonna do it in their way their version but the yeah. fact that you're kind of going off covers now um uh, and trying to not not impersonate people but like just like do them songs that are well known you're actually um doing your songs that you originally wrote and people are starting yeah. to know what them songs are and i'd say that as a fucking i say that as a great feeling like when when people when you hear someone sing along or you get a good response or you get a text message saying this song's really good fucking really enjoy it are you i know this guy that's he lives across the road from me his name is um dean his um hip hop rap name is raptor and um he he like we would my dad would play his rap songs like Blair in, in the house like when we were younger and also he still plays them now if he releases a song and I'd say that if he hears that he's like oh this is a good feeling there's people playing my music you know it's not me just in my room playing the back of myself it's people out there or people are sharing the content and when you when you released um your new song when with your response what what did you think your response was like for what people what was do you think was the feedback for it you know, it seems to be received positively. You know, people seem to enjoy it. You know, um, like releasing the single for me, like was it brought like a whole new, a whole new set of things to do. You know, like obviously as a songwriter, you write songs, you play live. You know, um, and releasing the single, like there was a lot of other stuff. You know, like uh, PR stuff, like uh, you know, emails to be sent, that kind of thing, which was totally new to me. You know, which 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 I got into doing really, which I actually ended up enjoy doing. You know what I mean? Um, we got a feature on Buzz Music, got a very positive review, was featured on Finbar Hope and Presents. Uh, and the feedback I got of people around me was that they enjoyed the song, you know. Um, I was very lucky I met three musicians in BIM. I attended BIM for a little while. Uh, I met three musicians in there, Freddie Trebolone, Dexter, and Lena Felicia, and uh, very talented guys, you know, who wrote the bass parts and did the drums for me, you know, which added layers to the track, you know, because, of course, the track was written with just me and the guitar, you know. Um, but I think bringing those musicians in and the other instruments helps just add weight to it, you know. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, so when you write music or you write a song, is it from a personal experience or is it just what you just you you just have an idea for like a, a song itself is it from a personal kind of background or so or is it from is it just like right i'm going to make a song or whatever comes into the head comes into the head yeah, you know i've had songs like that that are real personal you know like songs that i know where they're coming from a real deep place or something like that you know um me like i try to uh i try to sit down with my guitar every single day you know what i mean and if uh sometimes i'm not able to write a song in the day you know but if i'm not writing a song i'll be trying to practice a song you know um i suppose when you're doing something every day like the inspiration for a song isn't coming along every single day yeah. you know like sometimes i do just have to grind a song out you know or maybe just work on a song you know uh but like as you say i think the songs that kind of come spontaneously from deep inside you are generally the songs that connect most you know yeah because people everybody would have the you know a lot of us have the same worries the same problems and when someone comes out that is a talented singer and they they have a good voice and they can play instruments and then the way they record it and so the way it gets brought out there it's um and people can hear that someone could be going through a rough time or someone could be going through something similar to what the song is talking about and they could literally relate to it on the same level you know and i think that's really good about um singers uh, songwriters as well as that like music music to us as people as to humans themselves is it's just something about it that we can we connect with you know it's um, it brings up the past. It brings up so much memories. It brings up. It could bring up the present right now. Um, how you're feeling, and it just it helps you cope with it. Even if you're sad, even if you're crying from it, but even if you're in a happy, good mood, you play a song that's real upbeat and uplifting, and you go with that song. I like that song. Dancers, dancers, dancers are love. Dancers love music. Like that. Um. So. For the likes of your new song, Freedom. Song, Freedom. 
Um, one, wait, one um, second, one wait, second. One um, am I um, am I on loud? Uh, not. It's just playing out, yeah. Yeah, I can because just in case it comes back because people can probably oh, hear it back and forward. Um, yeah. So for the likes of Freedom, um, what was your inspiration to 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 make that song? I had a lot of songs like uh, there, you know, ready to record, you know, um, and I just I just was playing around with a few of them with uh, Alina, you know, who uh, has been a great help to me. She's a songwriter, very talented. Uh, she actually released a new single. People should check that out as well, you know. Um, she's been a great help to me. She would be further down. She would have released a lot about her own music. She runs Red Vine Music, you know, who released tracks for artists. And uh, I just sat down with her. We put out a few songs. And Search for Freedom just seemed like a, a good fit for a debut single, you know. Um, <clears throat> I like the lyrics in it, you know. I, I thought they they were kind of portraying me a little bit, like, you know. And... Um, we just went with Search for Freedom. She she liked it as well, you know. Yeah. Um, I was a bit unsure, like, you know, because it was my first song, you know. I was a bit unsure, like, you know. Mm-hmm. I always had that, like, niggling doubt in my head, you know, like, is this the right one to go for? But um, I, th- I think it went well, you know. So it's always good to have people around you to help you in those kind of situations, you know, just to give you a bit of a feedback, etc. you know. It's good that ha- it, it, it is good that you have people around you are doing the same thing, you know, um, whatever interests you, you have them same people that with the same interest. Um, because if you're going to do music and you go up like, all right, boys, or here, listen, does anyone want to hear this? And they're like, nah, we're not, <laughs> we don't like that. You get me? So it's great <laughs> to surround yourself with the same type of people that you share the same interests in, you know, it, they push each other. They fucking make each other want to go out and do the best they can do. They support each other to go to each other's gigs. And so, and that's what you want. If you're, if that's what you want to do and that's what you want to pursue, you need to surround yourself with people like that. You know, if you're better off, um, if you're not going to do that, it's, it's okay to have friends that are not really into it. But if they're no interest like if you don't have any friends like that at all like you need to find friends like that you know that are mad music mad and you know, and you have friends like that that are like purely just about music and they love writing and so that are you the only one out of all the friends it's funny you say that anthony like because uh up to recently like i would have kind of been like what you were describing a minute ago i wouldn't really have many friends who are involved in music you know i would have like not been around anyone like that you know um so it was only like, uh, of course, I went to BIM, you know, I made some contacts there, like I made some friends there, like uh, mainly Alina and things like that. Uh, but prior to that, like, as you said, like, I wouldn't have had any friends. I would have like played on a football team when I was like 14 and uh, been around the estate with my mates, you know what I mean? Like and yeah. none of them would have played music, you know? Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're very right that it's important, like, especially for myself as a songwriter, someone who wants to release music, to have people who are going to, you know, push you and help you, like, and, and believe in you. You know, I want I want to ask a question because I I would call myself a creative person, and I'd also call you a creative person. And I need to ask because I I have this problem, and I'm pretty sure every creative person has this problem. I can't if I go for a job, right, and I get a job. I find myself fucking utterly depressed and bored out of my head, and all I want to do. Is that you go? <laughs> I want to go make a video. I want to make a podcast. I want to make a comedy sketch. I just I don't want to be in this situation. And this the same with you. Do you, is it is it is it difficult to <laughs> stick to one job to go out and get a job and stick to that job because you're it's just not it's not your interest. And in. I I find this fascinating. I want to ask, this be the first time I ask someone like this and um, this question. So what's your what's your views on that? Anthony, I've been fired from so many jobs. <laughs> I, I walked out of my jobs, man. I walked out and I fucking that's it. Yeah. I've had like I've had like three like, you know, nine to five normal jobs, like just in shops and things like that, you know. And I think the longest I lasted was like three months in a cafe, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's always I a few I, months. It's never a year or two. It's always a few months. Yeah. <laughs> it's just lack of boredom, is it? It's just you just you're not interested. And I say the managers are like, "Here, this fella's not pulling his weight, and this fella t- doesn't seem interested." Like because I don't want to do this. I have to do this because society's telling us that we have to do this. We have to have a nine to five fucking day. You know what I mean, five days a week job so we can get money. We can do this. We can do that instead of fucking sitting at home, fucking writing songs, trying to produce as much as I can out there. I'm spending more time in here 
then I should be spending more time fucking pursuing my dream. So yeah. what you're doing right now, and you said you're sitting there every day, you're writing. If you're not writing, you're practicing a song. And that's what a fucking good create, creative person does. That's what a creative person does. He fucking sits there and he fucking learns the art. He, he, he literally, that's all he's thinking about 24 7. It's literally, as you said, like a boxer or something like that. That's all they're thinking about. They're not fucking doing a nine to five day job. They're in the gym fucking every single day, walking and walking and walking. And that's what you're doing. Do you get me? So fucking fair play to you for that, man. Fair play to you. You know? Yeah, they are, they are tough for like uh, creative people. Then I always found it hard to like. Uh, just be quiet and do the work. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm a bit of a talker, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I always found it very hard just to kind of knuckle down and just do the hours. You know what I mean? I'd be, oh, I'd be, what is all it? Over the place. What is it about it? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Like, like, we, we, we know, but what the fuck? Like, fucking Jamal or fucking whatever, and Wayne or fucking Chris or something, whatever is there and he's fucking loving life and he loves his job. But yeah, again, we're fucking in the back of the corner wishing that we're at home right now doing what we want to do. And it's yeah. just, we need money to get by. And I'm on fucking, I'll say, I don't care. I'm on welfare, you know, I get fucking, mm. I get much as welfare gives me. And I have my own little place. I can pay rent. Um, once mm. I can pay rent and I can have food and that's what I can do. So, this time right now, when I started off making videos five years ago, I was in my ma's house. The wallpaper, there was no wallpaper. The state of the room, if you went back and looked at it. But I still said, fuck this. I'm going to use whatever I have around me. And I used to have a laptop that, I'm not messing, my whole day, right, for two years, consisted. Every day for two years, I turned the laptop. It, laptop, it took about 30, 40 minutes to turn on. Then it'll take about 10, 15 minutes to fucking load up. And then I'd make my videos. I'd put it in. I'd do it, I'd edit it, sometimes it'd crash and I'd have to go fucking edit it again and then when I save it, you have to wait until the next day for it to fully save so you have to leave the laptop on it, laptop on it. and I didn't have any money I didn't have any money, I had 75 euro probably 50 euro because I had to give rent you get me? And you'd only get 100 euro so I fucking, I've done that for two years and I can say that I'm not at the place where I thought I'd be but my, my, my two main goals were make people laugh and I fucking done that, I know I done that and reach a thousand subscribers on my main channel and mm. i done that and that's i'm never gonna look back and go oh i didn't make it or i didn't get millions or i didn't fucking you know i didn't i don't have fans and fucking meetups i don't care i know that i will not be fucking i won't be sad when i'm older i won't regret i'm older because i set out to do me two goals and i've done it and that's the same as you you're, you're you're setting goals and you're doing it man you're out on spotify you're out on this and i know like a lot of people are like well anybody can go on spotify yeah but how many people actually go out and do it how many people, mm. and you're one of them pe people that go, fuck it, I'm making a song, this is what I'm doing, and I can see, it, see that you're sharing the shit over, and usually when I'm passionate about something, I fucking rant on it, and this is one of the moments now. Um, so yeah, man, I'm out of breath, so go on, talk about something there. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but you're right, Anthony, you are right, like, you know, and like, uh, like for me, like, it's interesting you said that, like, you don't want to be old and looking back, like, for me, like, as you say, like, like obviously I was in school like for a little while, not too long, but a little while. And obviously like uh, you know, doing like a standard One second, I think the mic just shot off there. It's all right. It's all good. I think it's just oh sorry, sorry. That was me. I think that was me. Sorry. Yeah, now I have it there. Sorry, it's some for some reason I pressed the mute so I wasn't interrupting and that happened. So, right, are you all good? Sorry, Anthony, yeah. Yeah, it's all right, man. Yeah, someone's oh, ringing. Good. Yeah, go on, go, go ahead, yeah, go on ahead. Yeah, like, obviously, like, uh, like a college course w w w is more straightforward, you know what I mean? Obviously, it, it brings its own difficulties, like, you know, I'm not saying it's easy, you know. Um, but for me, like, uh, I, I, I knew music is very hard, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I know that's, that's what I want to do, and that's... What I'm always gonna do, do you know what I mean? And uh, much like yourself, like I think it's great what you're doing. You know, podcasts like this are great. Do you know what I mean? It's brave, it's creative, it's innovative. Do you know what I mean? And I have fair play to you, like, and hmm. that's what I think people should do. Like, not that I'm any expert of what people should do, but follow, follow your passion, follow your dreams. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and you know, like I know it's a cliche, like, but you can achieve what you want in life. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's all there for people. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, yeah, it's just. 
we're, you know, that's just yeah, how I feel. Putting the, hard, putting the hard work, putting the effort, putting the time, and you will see results. Literally, that's I fucking go by that, and you do. Um, yeah. So, is there anything you'd like to promote um, before we get into the last segment of this uh, podcast? Is there anything you'd like to promote? Any new songs that you're probably working on or, or so like that? Yeah, so like uh, with Search for Freedom, we had a music video booked in, you know, with a, with, with a good guy, Kieran Casey, was going to make a music video for Search for Freedom. Uh, then the lockdown happened, uh, so kind of put the brakes on it a little bit. So there's going to be a lyric video for Search for Freedom coming out very soon. Second single is beginning to get in the works now, you know. Uh, Fire, second single is called Fire. Um, just kind of getting together with a few different musicians at the moment, like putting uh, just just getting the, the ball rolling on it, you know. And uh, hopefully that will be out <clears throat> as soon as possible, really. You know, it's written, it's ready to go, I'm ready to record, you know. So once the moving parts get going, like, you know, um, we'll be in the studio and, and that song will be out, you know. And, um, and yeah, I just I just love it, Anthony. I really I love it. I love everything about. It. I love writing songs. I love recording. I love playing live. I love it all, man. You know. Um, you can see. So it's, it's you all, can see your passion all, about it. You can see it's it. All enjoyment, to me. You know. Yeah, a lot of people think they're going off and doing something, and they, they this is what they want to do. But you can tell from the type of people, from the way they talk and the way they describe it, if they're passionate about it or not. And you can see that you're very passionate about it. Um, so that's that's it for that guys but we're going to get into the last segment now this is the segment that um, that I'll, I'll, I've only started with a few people now and it's really kind of switched up from whatever topic we're talking about so guys this is the last segment and this is Ghost Stories Ooh, scary Right now, I know we were talking about music and I could be talking about anything, but this is the segment I fucking, I love and I fucking, I, I yeah. still want. So um, there's two questions for you. One, do you believe in the afterlife or any anything like that at all, paranormal or so? And two, do you have a story you can tell some, maybe a time that uh, something freaked you out or maybe you saw something or do you know anybody that kind of, it kind of fucked up? And it's all right if you don't. Um, it's just, it's just the two questions, just in case. Yeah, like I, I, I kind of do believe in ghosts, Anthony. <laughs> Lovely, we're gonna have a good conversation. Lovely. Well, to be honest, do you know what I mean? I, 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 I kind of believe in all that stuff, ghosts and all that kind of thing. You know, like, like, uh, I'd be kind of afraid to say I don't in case they come and like get me in the middle of yeah. the night. Then so yeah. you said I'm not real. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, but yeah, I definitely, I, I believe in all that stuff. Do you know what I mean? I like all that stuff. You know what I mean? Um, ghost stories, like. Uh, See, I don't know, like, people are going to think I'm crazy. <laughs> it's all right, man. You should hear the fucking stories that people told already. I had, there used to be a telly here, and me and this girl called Saoirse Smith, she's a stand-up comedian, and we were talking, and she was talking about um, at the time where she was lying in bed, and she felt a hand on her face. I think someone just passed away, but she felt, she was lying there, and she felt a hand on her face like that. You're just brushing her face. Yeah. She turned around, there was no one there. But I reenacted it. I went, imagine she just grabbed you and done that. But when I it's on the, it's on the, when I done that, the telly the telly just fucking right. Oh, yeah. And it's on record. It's on recording, and it came right down on top of me. And this telly is fucking bolted into that fucking wall. Like if I can show oh, you, stop. if I show you, there's a that's bolted. That's not coming down. There's no way that's coming yeah. down. Um, but that happened to me, and I was like, what the fuck? Um, but, um, yeah. Don't don't feel fucking. Don't think you're like, oh Jesus, people are gonna think I'm mad. Like it's your beliefs. Believe what you want to fucking believe. So, uh, is there any stories at all that you could probably share that could be like, oh, that's a bit fucking freaky? <laughs> I'm not messing, right? I'm not. I'm not even messing here, right? When I was like six, well, I was I was in bed, you know. Mm. I was in bed. I used to wake up early, watch cartoons, that kind of thing, you know. And uh, I'm not messing. I woke up one morning and I don't know. I I, I thought I saw a ghost. I don't yeah. know if it was a ghost. I, you know, I, I thought I saw him. You okay. know? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> can you describe what it was? Like, can you describe, like, go back to that fucking memory and go step by step of what it is? I fucking believe you. Don't don't even think I don't, but I believe you. you are seen it. You've seen it. Kids, yeah, kids right. tend to see things like that. Kids do tend to see fucking ghosts or spirits and, like, dogs, they fucking yeah. have a sense that we don't have. So. Uh, yeah, go on, describe it there. You know, it was kind of just floating. It was kind of just floating. floating there, you know, it was like, uh, just chilling out, like, you know, like, yeah. uh, but it scared, it scared, the, it scared the bollocks out of me, Anthony. I said, that for nothing. Yeah, there you go. What the fuck are in these oh. Cocoa Pops? I'm fucking saying. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Um, yeah, come here. 
I, I also want to ask you as well in this segment as well that um, when, we, when we die, when we're all going to die eventually, right? And I know it's a real harsh topic to talk about, but I think yeah. as us as people, we need to, we need to, I, I still don't, but we need to um, like, you know, be comfortable with it because we're all going to go through the same thing. If there's one thing we're all going to do together is literally leave this earth, leave, leave this place, you know? And I'm, mm. I'm wondering what, you, what your belief is. Do you think that, well, you said you believe in ghosts, so I don't think this one would be, but are you just dead? You're gone. That's it. Uh, you're left for the earth. You go back into the earth. Fucking maggots get you. Nature gets you. And you, you just go back into the earth. Or do you believe that there is a place like this, uh, a different place, you know, after this, that we go somewhere else? Or do you believe in reincarnation? You know, I, I was only thinking about that recently. I swear <laughs> to God. You know, I swear to God, Anthony. But, uh, you know, like, like, I used to believe in all that stuff, like uh, reincarnation, that kind of thing. But really, Anthony, like... Uh, like, I just think we're nature, you know what I mean? We're nature, like, we're just, we're the same as the, all the other animals, the trees, you know, we're no different, you know what I mean? We just yeah. talk and think, we just talk and think, you know? So, like, uh, I think when we die, we just go back to nature, you know what I mean? Like, uh, the dogs and the cats, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. A lot of people say that, um, people that, it's fucking mad, but they're saying a lot of people that have done bad in their lives, they come back as a cat or a dog, like, that they, mm. they, they can't, they can't because fucking cats are very, very fucking similar to us. Like the the way that the way they are, the way they think, the way they yeah. talk. They're very fucking similar to us. Dogs are very fucking smart. Um, but a lot of people they say that um are watching podcasts and so and they turn around and they say that, yeah, it's like they people say that dogs and that's fucking mental to say as well. I know it's mad because how the fuck do you know? Like how where did you even come up with that? Didn't get me, but um, and dogs are fucking amazing. Dogs are fucking great. Um, so, um, my dog has a, my dog had a pretty handy life. I wouldn't mind coming back to him. You know, he had a pretty sweet life. Like, I mean, it's just it's just sad. I wish I wish I wish they lived longer, man. I wish because fucking dogs are the best thing ever. I have two pugs, man, and they're fucking mm. brilliant like you know they fucking brighten up me day they you know what i mean they if i'm feeling yeah. down feeling yoke, know, they come up and they notice and they come up to me and they fucking they lick your face dogs no mm. man you know they're very fucking great they're great creatures cats they can fuck off i don't like them um <laughs> yeah, and if people yeah, like cats good. if you like cats if you're there watching you like cats that's your own fucking problem i don't like cats um, <laughs> though i'm a dog person myself but i would never hurt a cat i wouldn't you know i wouldn't fucking get a banger and show up his arse where everybody fucking did it's fucking sick i think it's bloody sick um yeah, but, yeah i'm just more of a dog man myself but the, but that's it man that's that's all i love getting into this segment because i'm, I'm fucking fascinated i'm so interested and even though i ask these people do you want to come on and talk about science I then ask the scientists, so do you believe any? And it's, I know it's a stupid yeah. question to ask anybody, but I really, it's really fascinating to hear people's stories if they have stories or their opinions on or they think because it's, it's the question we all ask. Yeah, I mean, it is the question mm-hmm. that we all wonder about. We, we hope that there is, but we don't know the answer to it. And we never will. I don't think we ever will. Um, but guys, that is it for this podcast. Um, Tyke, is there anything you'd like to plug right now that I can put down in the description below that people can go check out? Just the single is all that's out at the moment. Uh, I also did a, a recording with Cabin Space Studios with a song called Don't Fall. That's on YouTube. Uh, so just the single, Search for Freedom and uh, Don't Fall, you know. Yeah, there you go. So um, thanks very much for coming on. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, if people don't know, I'm literally only awake about, about an hour. <laughs> um, so if you can see, I have the Podge and Rod eyes where my eyes are like half fucking dumb. My eyelids are like down like that. So um yeah, I'm 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 only kind of awake, so I need to go get a shower and everything. Um but yeah, thanks very much, man. And I come here, I say this a lot, and I know I say this on recordings, I, I notice myself saying it, but I say that even off recording, I'd still say this to you. You I, I want guests on that are interesting to talk to. I want guests on that are creative. I don't want people to come on and they're literally like, So what have you been doing? It's like well, I've been just around the shops and, you know, and we got kicked <laughs> off cars and all and we rob cars. I don't care. I don't give a rat. You can sit there and you can rob cars all you want. I don't want you on. But for the likes of yourself, you're, you're a talented guy and I can see that you're passionate about it, man. And you're not fucking... Yeah, you know, I mean, the way you talk and the way you present yourself is fucking is it's great. Like, yeah, me like it's fucking respect there so as well. So, 
Um, I'll be definitely fucking listening to all the songs that you bring out anyway. I've shared your song already. I've seen that you are you are interviewed and you'd share your um, you know, online 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 interviews and you'd share on your page and all. I'm I follow I follow along with you. If the, if I miss a song here and there, that doesn't mean that I'm like, ah oh, no, I just I'm not I don't mm-hmm. like it anymore. It's just right, like, I just haven't seen it yet. So I'll, I'll go back and watch it, you know. So fucking fair play to you, man. Keep it up and uh I know, I know that's a cliche thing to say. You're like, oh, keep up the good work. It's like, obviously, I'm going to keep up the good work. I'm not going to fucking do it just because you said it. But um, yeah, just keep up the good work, man, and fucking keep doing it and keep pushing forward, you know, and you're going to fucking, you're going to eventually, you're going to get to a place where you want to be, you know? And um, so yeah. just keep fucking, just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Anthony, thanks so much for having me on. This was, this was fun. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, man. Um, right, so guys, thanks so much for watching. This has been another episode of the Already Podcast. And remember, before we go, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just <laughs> Already Podcast. Guys, thanks for watching. Um, peace.